real chunky, huh? It's unfortunate for them they cannot hurt Valkyrie, but you know. He was a good stopping point anyway. Yeah, it's definitely not bad. 62 rounds. Exilizers. Enemies are level 921 and they have double health, double armor. <laughs> Sarah says slow down. <laughs> All right. Hello and welcome, everyone. So today we are going to be talking about Void Cascade. This is one of three new game modes introduced in the Angels of the Zaramon. And I think it is the best mode that DE has added to Warframe since Disruption, which is also extremely, extremely good. Uh, this mode is where you're going to farm your new arcanes, possibly a ton of focus, and it's also just a really active, fun game mode that I think goes at a good pace, and it has a number of rewards you're probably going to want to farm, and you might want to farm those on the Steel Path version of this mission. So, in this video, we're not going to be talking about, you know, the best ways to run this mission. We're just going to be talking about why you would want to run this mission and also the things that you should keep in mind whenever you're fighting these enemies more specifically the enemies that you're going to encounter on the steel path because if we quickly take a look at the drop tables of the primary enemies that you're going to be encountering here which are the thrax thrax centurions and the thrax gatuses um these boys have a five percent mod drop chance by default and they have a 10% chance to drop any of the new arcanes once you roll that 5% drop chance. So, for that, running this mission on the steel path is incredibly good because not only does that increase your spawns, but also it will double the arcane drop chance of these enemies. Because it is considered a mod drop chance, that will boost you to a 10% drop chance as opposed to that 5%. In addition to that, if you happen to get a mod drop booster from a sortie or from Barokatir, that stacks with the Steel Path drop chance booster, giving you a grand total of a 20% drop chance for arcanes from both of these enemies. And in Void Cascade, these enemies are guaranteed on every new Exilizer, and more will spawn usually in groups of two, especially the deeper you go in. So it is incredibly lucrative, given the prices of these arcanes, to be running this mission in the steel path, ideally with that mod booster to get a ton of these arcanes to make a lot of platinum. But for that, these enemies are not exactly weak. The Thrax Centurions, which are going to be like the main ones that you're going to always be fighting, as these are the ones that are guaranteed. Legatus is only spawn in uh, with a Centurion with them, so you are going to be seeing way more Centurions than you are the Legatuses. These enemies are pretty formidable, at least on the Steel Path. In the regular version of the mission, if you're an experienced player, you're going to have no problem whatsoever. And these enemies have a bunch of good rewards for killing large amounts of them. Because in addition to the arcane drops, which you're obviously going to be going for, killing them is also going to give you 2,500 focus points apiece to whatever your active school is. Now, for Steel Path, you're probably going to want more specific schools and things that we're going to go into uh, later. But just in general, if you're running the regular version of this mission, you get a ton of focus very, very fast while still being able to get those arcanes, albeit at a you know lower rate than in the Steel Path. And that's pretty good because you can earn a ton of focus very fast. I would say that this is probably my preferred way to farm focus. Not that I need any anymore. But if you are leveling up your focus, this is probably going to be my suggested place to do that because you're going to farm arcanes that you are going to use here. Um, of course, specifically, Emergence Dissipate is very, very good. Looking at what these enemies have, though, they have a few things that are uh, here to mess you up, let's say. So... They have a magnetic dash, so whenever they do their invincible air dash, that always ends with a magnetic proc, and that can drain your energy very fast. So, status immunity, huge plus here. Also, these enemies will always spawn with overguard, which means they are going to be immune to the vast majority of what you're going to be throwing at them, especially in terms of crowd control, and they are much harder to kill because they have overguard. In addition to that, their stats are no joke. If we look here on the wiki, we can see that they're level scaling uh, up at the re regular like level 50 or so. These boys have, you know, about 900k effective health, which is 
pretty chunky. Obviously, at the point in the game where you're on the Zaramon in the regular missions, that's probably not going to be a big deal. But if we're looking at the Steel Path, you're going to notice that this number is going to raise significantly because when we add 100 levels, they go from that, you know, just under a million EHP to 37.5 million EHP on the Steel Path. That is considerably chunky. So not only are you going to want complete status immunity so that you do not get magnetic procced and you know, have your powers be useless, but the vast majority of the EHP on these enemies is coming from their armor because they have a lot of it. Obviously here on the wiki, uh, we can see this uh, 3600, but remember steel path modifiers, they get a 2.5 X multiplier on those stats. So if we're looking at their health and armor, you actually have to multiply both of those. Uh, by 2.5 in order to get what those actual values are and that ends up with us looking at them and if they have 9027 armor if they're a level 150 on the steel path that comes out to about 96 percent damage reduction and we're going to talk about why you want way more damage reduction on these enemies uh, and why that's going to make your life infinitely easier so if we look at this uh kind of spread here of how much armor reduction gets you what if you remove half of their armor, a full half of their armor, taking them down to about 4,500, you're going to get about 2x damage. They, they lose 3% uh, of their damage reduction, which is not great. There are a lot of 50% armor strips in the game, such as, you know, like Ember's Fire Blast, I believe is 50%. Uh, and then you have usually Pillage is going to be at about that 50% range if you're on a 200% strength build. Lots of things can remove 50% of armor. This is just here to show that that's not really going to increase your damage very much. Obviously, those abilities can be cast more than once. So if we look at 75% armor reduction, you're going to be getting about four times damage at 88% damage reduction, which is still not great. But if we look at 90% armor reduction, uh, and this 90% armor reduction is just an example of showing like how ineffective it is to remove these different portions of armor, uh, but this is going to lower them to about 75% DR, which is going to put them or put you at about six times the damage you'd originally be doing to them in their default state at this level. Obviously, though, when you remove 100% armor, they have 0% damage reduction, and you're going to be doing, as compared to their fully armored state, about 20 times the damage. So going from a 90% armor reduction to a 100% armor reduction, you are just about actually better than tripling your damage from the 90% armor reduction. So vitally, I would say you want to completely strip these enemies of armor. There are a few different ways that you can do that. Uh, there is, of course, just subsuming ashes shuriken with the augment. Uh, if you can build at least 145% strength, that is excellent. Uh, people have been running Nyx for dealing with these enemies, and she is actually very good at it as she has good survivability, especially with the recent buffs that have uh, given her more mobility. She has that good survivability, and then you can remove the defenses of whatever enemy you happen to be looking at, and then shooting them with like, you know, a Redeemer, throwing a Glaive Prime at them, etc., etc., is going to make short work of them. So Nyx actually quite good at this mode, I would say. For me... I have been running, and we're going to talk about that build in another video. I've been running Valkyr which, with Ashes Shuriken personally, as there's a number of different factors that have come together in this update that I think makes her pretty good at this, uh, as she is, you know, completely invulnerable in her four, which lets you ignore regular enemies, as you are probably seeing here. So I just really wanted to get across that that damage reduction is immense, 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 immense on these enemies you really want to completely remove armor. And that can be any number of things. Even if you are just using like shattering impact, if that's what you have, shattering impact is going to be pretty considerable as long as you have a fast attacking weapon uh, for removing that armor. Because even if you're subsuming those, or not subsuming, uh, using shattering impact on Valkyr's claws, for example, they hit fast enough that you're going to remove that armor completely and usually faster than you would with corrosive procs. The other thing to consider is that if you are using the right damage type against them, because they are ferrite armor, which is corrosive damage, for those of you that don't know what the correct damage type is, corrosive damage has a unique property that many of you probably don't know about, 
uh which is because it has the three pluses on its damage type every plus is more damage three pluses is plus 75 percent that 75 percent is not only 75 percent more damage it is also 75 percent armor ignored by that damage type so basically all corrosive damage by default is giving you that remove 75 percent armor which means your corrosive damage is going to do four times more and then plus that 75 percent damage whenever you're hitting that ferrite armor that is a definite consideration because in the case where you're like at 90 percent if you're hitting them with corrosive if you, you can't quite hit that 100 percent mark uh, that means you're going to actually be at a 97.5% reduction, which is considerably more effective, of course. In addition, besides subsuming Ash's Shuriken and like playing as things like Nyx, there is another option, and that is running Unairu. Unairu has access to a 100% armor strip, and it's pretty quick to get in its tree. So if you are not too concerned about farming the focus, from these enemies or if you need to work on Unairu anyway if you're trying to get last gasp and stuff I would actually probably suggest that you go into that armor strip first so that you can get these enemies completely armor stripped and you just have that you know in your tool toolbox whenever you need to pull it out for enemies that need to be armor stripped uh, and you can just use your operator hit there too the boom no armor eliminate the enemy super super easy to do uh, and actually, like, one of the things that's pretty much the only thing that is really making Unairu actually kind of a great choice, I think. So, that's just a few things uh, about Void Cascade and dealing with the Centurions. Obviously, this is more specifically to, you know, Steel Path. You're really not going to need to do any of this stuff in the regular scaling uh, because things just don't get that crazy. If you pull, like, a decent build together and you've got an okay weapon at best and it's got, like, you know, a good build on it, you're going to be very very fine up into like the 40s or so uh of the scaling of void cascade because this mission does scale very very quickly as you saw at probably the very beginning of the video um the like level 900 or so steel path guys you do not need to go that far c rotation for void cascade is uh just xlizer 16 being done and just going there you're just seeing that in this video it takes about you know i was at 20 minutes and i was at like 20 xlizers so doesn't take too long to get in there enemies don't gain too many levels even on the steel path uh at that really early stage of this but if you stay late the thrax spawns do increase astronomically that being like filling entire rooms with thrax so if you get a build together that can you know go to those extremely high levels and remove their armor and still like take them down and kill them and survive you get an insane amount of arcanes especially with a mod booster I will say Void Cascade is probably the number one mission that you want at least one other person for. Um, and the reason for that is because the rotations of where the Exilizers spawn, you really ideally want to be able to be kind of in two places at once, which would require a second person. That second person being at the other end of the map whenever the Exilizers are extremely far apart. For that, uh, I do wish that the mode uh, changed the spawning uh, positioning of the Exilizers and if they would be a bit closer together just for solo players. Obviously, in squads, that's not necessary and people should be able to, you know, divide and conquer. But for solo players, I do wish that the Exilizers had kind of a maximum distance they could be apart because we can't be in two places at once, it turns out. Especially not on a, you know, very dense environment with, like, a lot of hallways. We can't even do, like, Wisp teleport a million miles and stuff like that in that kind of environment. So, with that uh, other stuff for Cascade, if you want to run it, uh, you really ideally should have an amp built. You don't need anything too specific. Uh, in this video, I am using a 747, which I've been enjoying very much. Uh, and if you don't know the scheme for the amps and stuff, uh, you can join the Discord. There's a whole chart and everything else that just helps everyone know what the amps are. The link to that is in the Discord, or is it, the link to the Discord is in the description, so go check that out. Um, but I've been using a 747, 777's great, uh, 427's are really solid, uh, there are, you know, it's pretty much just matters what your, the front of your weapon is, so whatever prism you decide to go with, you just want to make sure that it can, A, do enough damage to the Thrax, as that is going to be the thing that can cripple you, um, whenever you're going really, really late into Steel Path, uh, and you just want to make sure that the the end of the weapon for your, um, amp should always be a 7, because you really just want that 
if you are restricted to only parts from Cetus, if you're not doing any of that Fortuna nonsense because the grind is terrible and I respect your decision, I would personally suggest a 4 2 3 because that's all parts that you can get from exclusively Cetus. So if you're only doing stuff from there, 4 2 3 going to do you very well. It used to be the meta for a reason. Anyway, uh, that is kind of the explanation of what's going on in Void Cascade and just like some notes and things to consider if you're going to be running this mission, as I have been quite a lot. Um, so yeah, enjoy the rest of the run. I just like went to 20 minutes or so just so I'd have some B rolls, just me rolling around with Valkyr. That Valkyr builds video is going to be coming up very soon. Hopefully you guys enjoy that as well. Uh, I should be streaming tonight, so come hang out. Warframe questions are always welcome, even if we're not streaming Warframe, and I will see you there. Stations away from the exilizers. You're the hero, and you thought I'd betray you. <laughs> Possessed exilizer located. Purge it and make it work for us.